so before I start my presentation, if there is one thing that at the end of the presentation you won't remember anything else, I would like you to remember um, a, a few messages. One of them, um, uh, some of them I will repeat at the end, but the first one is Slovakia is a deeply divided country at the moment. Um, everything I say, um, there is um, a counterpoint and for equal measure of one one way action, there is a, there's an equal uh, equal reaction um, uh, in in numbers and percentages. Um, what I mean, what do I mean by that? Um, well, um, for in particular, for um, any anti-vax and anti uh, or pro-Russian move movements or or support, um, there is an equal amount of a silent majority or um, a louder major ma minority um, that oppose these views. Now, with that said, I would like to proceed, uh, and uh, due to slight technical difficulties, I will always try and call out my my next slide. Um, so, if I could move on to my my next slide, and uh, I'll start with the introduction. Um, so, when it comes to addressing right wing extremism in Slovakia, um, there is no united uh, legal definition of what extreme right wing movement is. However, Slovak Penal Code. Uh, recognizes um, uh, definition of uh, hate crime and extremism in general uh, that include include both left and right wing extremism uh, and promotion uh, and act of acts and I uh, of uh, and promotion of extreme acts and ideologies. Um, the national strategy um, for the uh, concept or called conceptual framework for countering radicalization and extremism uh, to 2024 does carry a particular uh, extreme right-wing definition uh, and it def defines it as um, extremism or type of extremism that is characterized by ultranationalism, xenophobia, racism, anti-democratic and anti-systemic attitudes and a rejection of egalitarian principles. Um, to combat these, um, the Slovak government has established a, uh, a, a, the abbreviation is VRAX, um, it's a, a subcommittee on the pre prevention and elimination of racism, xenophobia, and anti-Semitism, of which this author is uh, is a proud member. Um, this um, committee or government committee is there to advise the government on uh, um, uh, issues and modes. It brings together uh, representatives of the uh, line ministries of the Slovak government, um, as well as uh, the institutions, the secret service, the police, as well as um, members of um, um, uh, non-governmental organizations, uh, so, so, or members of the public, basically. Um, yeah, if I could move on to my uh, next slide, please. Um, in terms of the historical context, um, where does the um, where does the extreme right wing movement in Slovakia stem from? Where does it come from? Um, I will not spend too much time on this, um, but as with many Central European extreme right wing movements, the traces can be um, or it can be traced back all the way to um, World War or pre or just before World War Two. Um, with various pro pro Nazi, there is there was a pro Nazi regime in uh, Slovakia um, that uh, had its characterizations and as well as a, excuse me um, pro uh, Nazi Germany uh, puppet regime headed by a Catholic priest, which was uh, a sort of Slovak unique um, thing. Um, after the war and the defeat of uh, of uh, fascism in uh, in our country. Uh, Czechoslovakia was re-established. Uh, unfortunately, after 1948, um, this uh, history of um, Nazi regime was covered over by a, an equally horrific uh, communist regime uh, that for 40 years um, suppressed any kind of um, um, discussions on the nature or um, uh, coming to terms with our own history. Uh, in the early 1990s, uh, there is a market rise of nationalism that is not unique to Slovakia. That was um, that, that was uh, uh, across the region, as I'm sure you know um, from uh, the previous speakers, and I'm sure um, the speaker after me will also reiter reiterate this. 1990s were also a very interesting time for uh, extreme right uh, extreme right wingers uh, in uh, um, in Slovakia. Um, there was a whole uh, generation of uh, and groups. Um, the rise of um, since the 1990s, early 2000s, uh, were marked by the rise of Kotleba 
um, as as a, a, a figurehead or a leader of a, of a particular party that over the years changed and had many uh, had many names and different diff- difficult and different uh, successes or failures uh, when it comes to uh, entering the mainstream politics. Um, the rise of the 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 explanation of why extreme right wing movement even exists in Slovakia um, post nineteen ninety era um, lies in different economic, political, and social factors. Um, the uh, uh, economic transformation of early 2000s meant a large-scale disenchantment with mainstream politics and feelings of marginalization for a large part of uh, regional population. Um, there was also a rise uh, in populist and national ten- tendencies um, that was specifically or tar- targeting uh, anti-minority and anti- my, uh, anti-immigrant uh, settlement uh, sentiments. Um, and the last um, driver, um, specifically in the last uh, 10 to 15 years was the rise, the rise of social media that presents a new platform for spreading um, narratives and providing new recruit, recruitment platform um, for these various uh, extreme right-wing groups. Um, if I could um, move on to the next slide, please. Um, the Now, there is nothing particularly Slovak about or specifically Slovak about um, what I've just described in terms of historical context. Um, a similar story can be traced in uh, in both Czech Republic and Hungary um, that due to uh, closeness of borders and sim- similarity of, uh, uh, of our historical experiences. Um, however, in terms of um, Slovak specific narratives um, that I would like to point out, um, is first and foremost probably the uh, anti-Roma narratives um, that are a mainstay of most uh, uh, anti-Roma, uh, the, I mean, um, extreme right-wing move, uh, movements within Slovakia. Um, Roma communities uh, have been targeted by racially motivated attacks, uh, discrimination and hate speech, uh, for which several members of uh, established political parties have now been um, uh, also uh, convicted um, at court. Um, secondly, migration and Islamophobia is a particularly strange um, thing in terms of uh, the Slovak context, and this is due to a very low numbers of both migrants um, and Muslims within Slovakia. Now, migration has become a bit of a problem uh, in terms of rising numbers in the past six months. However, this does not explain the experience of, um, of, of or the mainstay of, of these narratives in the past 15 years. Um, the third factor is a historical revision, a revisionism. And what do I mean by that? By that is the tendency of different uh, extreme right-wing movements to explain, try and explain away the experiences of uh, the independent Slovak uh, Republic in uh, uh, during World War II um, it has to be remembered that this uh, this regime was responsible for the deportation of uh, fifty thousand of its um, um, of its own citizens uh, to um, Nazi death camps. Um, so, trying to explain um, uh, this regime as saving Slovakia from a bigger catastrophe or from the oppression of uh, of the Czechs, for example, um, is what uh, is the revisionism I am uh, I'm trying I'm now trying to talk about. Um, and finally, uh, anti-establishment. Now, um, or anti-establishment um, moods, uh, narratives um, used, well, um, these are um, uh, relating to positioning as the third option, um, as in the anti-politician politicians, uh, particularly during recent years um, of COVID, uh, uh, it, um, anti-vaccination stance, um, anti-vax, uh, as well as um, after the war, 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 war uh, or uh, Russian aggression in uh, in Ukraine started, um, pro-Russian and distinctly pro-Russian narratives. Um, now these are also not uniquely Slo- uh, uniquely Slovak in in terms of uh, they do not occur uh, occur anywhere else within within the region. However, there are some um, things that uh, could be pointed out as uh, particularly Slovak or Slo- uh, coming out of a Slovak context. Um, yeah, let's move on to the next slide, please. Um, so a quick rundown uh, of uh, who is who within uh, within Slovakia, um, what, what groups uh, we've looked at during uh, during our research. 
um, we've selected uh, several of these of these parties, but it has to be remembered that there is um, there there is a, a the list is much longer um, depending on the on the decade. Um, so the the pre the original precursor of uh, all uh, all extreme right wing movements uh, would be Slovak National uh, Front, Slovak Knights, and Slovak Dawn, all now defunct movements from the uh, from the early nineteen uh, nineties that provided um, grassroots organization as well as uh, members for the for the later iterations, uh, the first of which was the Slovak uh, Slovak People's Party or uh, uh, Slo Slovenska Ludová Strana. Um, that actually entered the, the the general election context in and in, in the early 2000s. Um, in 2009, Slovak Attorney General um, um, submitted a proposal to the, to the Slovak highest court for the dissolution uh, for um, 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 well going way well beyond anti-Hungarian re rhetoric um, and um, um, uh, having uh, anti-constitutional statements uh, in the press and media. Um, inexplicably, um, this uh, uh, proposal was withdrawn in 2011. However, by then, the, the, this, this party uh, basically um, broke up and transformed itself into a, a much more uh, or better organized uh, or worse iteration of itself, the Ljudova strana Naše Slovensko. Now, this particular party uh, is quite hard to grasp on. Depending on every three to five years, this, uh, this party will rebrand itself in terms of a name, but not necessarily in its symbols, and definitely not in the in terms of a leader that leads it. Um, this is, of course, the Marian Kotleba, the leader of a, a, a mainstay leader of um, uh, already mentioned. The biggest success of this particular party was um, their the electoral successes of 2016 and 2020 um, national elections, winning eight percent and fourteen seats in 2016 and seventeen seats uh, out of 150. Uh, um, members of the parliament, so that's a that's a substantial representation within the Slovak parliament. Um, however, uh, during the course of the 2020 to 2023 20, uh, election period, two of the, the of the mandates were lost um, due to uh, criminal convictions of its members, including uh, the the leader of the party itself. After which the party basically split into two. Um, and this is what brings us to the Republic. Um, the Republic at the at the very latest um, election campaign, because there were national elections uh, in uh, autumn of 2023. Um, these national elections basically preceded the um, the writing of this uh, of this chap uh, chapter within uh, within our report. However, um, what can be said is that the the the, the breakup of uh, uh, Kotleba's party uh, basically created Republic. Um, that uh, hollowed out um, Ludova Strana, uh, uh, listeners, or, or uh, People's Party, uh, Kotleba's Party, um, uh, following um, down to below 1%. Uh, the Republic itself, in the most recent elections, uh, ended up just uh, under the uh, threshold required, 5% threshold required for entering the Slovak National Parliament. Um, it means, however, that... Um, this party will still receive funds from the government. I will talk about more about financing, uh, I think, at the next slide. Yep. Um, but uh, Republic basically um, crashed out in the in the last elections from the first forecast ten percent uh, to now four point five percent gained in the parliament. Meaning, as I said, they did not enter the Slovak parliament. But they did qualify for for um, state funds for the next uh, four years. One of the reasons is um, they became too mellow, uh, meaning they tried to distance themselves from from their openly pro-Nazi and fascist um, uh, agendas, uh, trying to describe themselves as anti-fascists um, uh, and anti-fascist uh, having anti-fascist stances, um, which confused their voters. Um, and the second thing that happened to them was that um, other um, mainstream parties took over um, and ran with the mainstay agendas of this party, um, namely uh, reproductive uh, reproductive rights, um, anti uh, anti immigration, anti Muslim um, uh, narratives as well. Um, so uh, moving on. Um, night wolves, uh, yes, the the night wolves, the the biker gang from uh, from Russia, known for its 
rides across Europe, does have a chapter in Slovakia. It also represents the first um, um, Slovak um, um, on the international sanctions list. Uh, it's been active since 2011. Um, a lot can be said for them. Their base is in Dolna Krupa, and that there were several articles in the public um, uh, in the public where it was alleged that these uh, th this movement received uh, direct funds from the uh, from the from Russia. Uh, Mr. Hambalak even having a picture with Mr. Putin himself. Um, Slovensky Branci is an example and the biggest example of uh, a paramilitary group in Slovakia that inexplicably um, self disbanded in 2022. Um, while not or openly uh, or displaying open sympathies for Nazi symbolism uh, or ideology, the links with night, uh, the, the provable links with, um, for already mentioned, night wolves, um, uh, common training, um, and uh, openly um, advocating for uh, preparing its members for the service in Slovak armed forces, uh, both police and the army. Um, and finally, Akshna Skupina Vzdor Kisuce. Um, is probably the smallest of this, uh, but one of the more more notorious groups um, with having um, uh, literature outputs, um, banned books, uh, different. Uh, its leader, Marian Magat, is in uh, um, um, has been indicted on thirty six counts of uh, extremism, including uh, possession of illegal arms. Um, so, a, 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 a noteworthy example of uh, um, of this. Um, moving on to the next slide, uh, and I'll try and keep it uh, a little brief, um, being mindful of time. Um, um, COVID-19 uh, is an important uh, thing that had both good and bad aspects for the for the extreme right-wing movement uh, movements in Slovakia. Um, the most open one was the was an immediate loss of financing due to uh, the ban of uh, public events. That before could serve such as concerts, for example, that could serve for, uh, for uh, financing purposes. Um, however, what it lost, they also gained in in following on social media with almost sixteen hundred different Facebook groups alone, uh, springing up, criticizing and rejecting pandemic measures, uh, and having a boon, uh, representing a boon in terms of uh, recruitment numbers for sympathizers and follow uh, and direct followers. What's even more worrying is um, the next slide um, is the vulnerability to Russian propaganda. Uh, now, this is something that, um, um, oh. ah, yes, here we are. Um, in my notes, I got, got lost my notes there for a second. Um, so while the uh, approval for, uh, for Putin um, uh, in uh, in public polling fell from 52% uh, positive or approval down to 28 in March of 2022. It can be said that it has since rebounded to almost pre-war levels. Um, what I was saying about Slovakia being deeply divided is also um, proven by the fact that 45% of Slovaks believe that NATO, uh, led by the US, uh, is, respons is directly responsible for the start of the conflict in Ukraine, while 51% Slovaks uh, openly disagree with this claim. Um, now, the worrying trend of uh, taking over extreme right-wing movements uh, um, narratives by mainstream parties that are now, uh, or after the elections, um, uh, represent the, uh, the official Slovak government stance um, is also in uh, calls for ceasefire and peaceful resolution by a negotiation as a mainstay uh, and part of the Slovak government uh, manifesto uh, approved just last week, um, which if uh, maintained is a is a worrying trend for a uh, um, um, Slovak government's um, um, international standing. I would say. Um, so um, the you know, this vulner vulnerability to Russian propaganda existed prior to the war in Ukraine. Um, uh, there is uh, tracing back all the way to the to the nineteenth century and uh, Slavic uh, narratives of Slavic brotherhood. Um, the problem of um, not disappearing quickly is something I already covered um, in terms of percentages. Uh, Klopsek in particular is doing uh, regular polling on uh, on this, uh, as in vulnerability to uh, to Russian propaganda, and I recommend everyone to to check out this uh, this research strand of of Klopsek. It is well worth it, uh, and if you're Slovak, that's uh, it's well worth and very worrying. Um, this belief is widespread uh, in terms of uh, belief in. Um, 
Russian narratives and pro um, um, uh, pro Putin um, uh, narratives, basically. Um, so let's talk about the uh, finances on uh, our next slide. Um, Slovakia is um, uh, slightly peculiar uh, in terms of uh, um, financing. It does not rely. Doesn't it's uh, regular or regular or uh, already named uh, extreme right wing movements that tried and form political parties do so for one of the main reasons is um, to receive state funding for their success in um, uh, in national elections. Um, there is a percentage uh, allocated every year for every political party that takes part in national elections and um, gets beyond the 3% uh, of all votes cast uh, threshold. Um, this in real term numbers um, means that between 2016 and 2060, uh, 2020, 2016 and 2020, 4.22 million euros was uh, allocated for uh, uh, Kotleba's party, which also means 7.2 million uh, for the next, uh, in uh, in the last uh, three, four, three to four years. Um, it is estimated that um, Republic, not less than a third, there's a, there's a slight mistake in this, um, uh, or it, um, um, estimated to be 1 million per annum, for Repub Republica because of their election success. This will not be not be going to, to Lidova Stana Nasha Slovensko, so not to Kotleba's party. Um, there is also um, uh, alleged, no, though not, not proven and definitely nothing that um, can be put to uh, as, as some um, uh, direct support between the Russian Federation and Night Wolves, um, for which uh, sanctions were already uh, put in place. Uh, um, online activities, I have already um, talked about um, and can be seen more uh, on uh, on my next slide, uh, one to the last, I believe. Uh, and um, so, uh, online activities beyond uh, COVID that that I've already mentioned and uh, the the rise of which uh, cannot be uh, underestimated uh, can be illustrated on um, two personalities. Uh, one of which is. Um, Danny Bombitz or Danny Kolar, a, a particular um, personality that um, also took part in uh, 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 in the Slovak national elections. Uh, mainstream party members uh, from two different parties went and visited him in London, where he currently resides. Um, he's been um, he was made inf infamous for his uh, doxing and publicly per per publicizing personal details of medical personnel um, that was. Um, uh, um, doing the immunization during during COVID, um, he uh, gathered quite a following. Uh, quite a following in terms of, of Slovakia, where fifty thousand followers is quite a large following for uh, for Slovak Telegram channels. Um, and um, um, this, it, it, uh, what can be said, uh, said uh, about him, or why do I mention him as, as an important? He's a symbol of what. Um, um, uh, of what online activities of a single man can do uh, beyond uh, the, the powers or scope of uh, uh, entire political parties could do, uh, say, 10 years ago. He is cap fully capable of covering by himself topics of migrants, refugees, anti-Semitism and Roma, all wrapped up in one in one person, um, uh, spiced up with um, a, a good heaps of, of pro-Russian propaganda. Uh, which uh, is almost impossible to remove, very hard to prosecute, and because of the fact that he's not in Slovakia, um, very hard to put a stop to. Um, the second aspect is online self-radicalization that has been made possible in the last few years. That means uh, people are uh, people, especially young people, um, are capable of uh, self-radicalization online without having any formal contact with any formal. Um, groupings or um, or particular members. Um, this uh, was made. Um, particularly obvious in February 2023, um, when a lone shooter uh, attacked uh, an LG, uh, LGBTQI establishment um, and uh, shot and killed um, two members of the uh, LGBTQI community. Uh, he was later identified as a 19-year-old um, man, son of one one-time political, uh, unsuccessful political candidate, uh, who self-radicalized on 4chan of all places, uh, blaming, um, even going as far as publishing a ma manifesto blaming Jews and the LGBT LGBTQI community um, on, on Twitter for um, um, 
uh, all the bad things in his life and um, in the life of uh, Slovakia. Uh, in this, uh, in in th- this manifesto was later um, dissected um, and uh, investigated. It was made clear that his ideological grounding came from 2018 Pittsburgh synagogue attacks. Um, um, so. In my my last slide, um, Kerry's uh, forecasts they are also present in the in the report itself, um, and um, here I would like to reiterate uh, some of the some of the things uh, that are currently happening. Um, so transformational and generation change that we could see with the split of the uh, of Republica as a party um, and gaining gaining traction. It could be considered a success that they, they these two parties, are, neither Kotlebas nor Republika, are currently in the Slovak parliament. Um, but I would consider that uh, they uh, more da- even more dangerous because, as already uh, shown, the finances have not been cut off, um, not really. Um, and uh, at the same time, they're free to 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 uh, electioneer in the in the next round. Um, and more worryingly. Um, the uh, some of the narratives or main themes, such as not one more bullet to Ukraine, uh, being tough on migration and um, anti-LGBTQI um, um, propaganda, um, um, have now become uh, mainstream uh, for political parties that currently uh, constitute the Slovak government. The disbanding of Slova- Slovenski Branci or uh, um, Slovak enlisted men. Um, also seems like a good uh, like a good thing and uh, in a certain sense it definitely is um but it leaves former recruits uh, harder to track and trace uh, and may already be infiltrated within slovak armed forces police and army both um and finally um a recent terrorist attack from february 2023 um is a a warning sign um um for um for, for the future that online self radicalization uh, is a real thing even in uh, in Slovakia and with that i would like to to finish my presentation and i'm looking forward to your questions